Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I see we made it. I know we stayed out late last night. I'm surprised that anyone is here, but we did it. My name is Valerie Biggs Hill, and I'm president of the National Board of the Ebony Bobcat Network, and it is indeed a pleasure to serve in that capacity. And I would like to welcome all of you to the Ebony Bobcat Network breakfast and awards. We have distinguished alum that we will be recognizing, and it just is a testament to not only did we learn hard, play hard, but we left here and we pursued careers across this country, across this world, that have done Ohio University very proud. And I would like to thank all of you. Again, welcome alumni, students, faculty, our distinguished president, Hugh Sherman. At this time, I would like to welcome President Dr. Hugh Sherman of our beloved university. Valerie asked me to be shorter than she was, so I don't know if I can do that that quick. So it's great to see you all here this morning. It's been, a, so I guess I'll ask this question. I'll do a check-in. So how's the reunion going so far? <laughs> it, it's been really fun for us at the university to see all of you back. We're honored to have you back. We're proud of your accomplishments. And we really, it's been fun to see all of your friendships and love for each other. So it's, it's just fun to watch the, the group together. Um, the, the only thing I would really like to say uh, is I want to thank, um, give our deepest thanks for the Ebony Bobcat Network, the National, as well as the chapters, right? We so appreciate their their involvement at the university and their involvement with our black students. As you all know, when you come back and you talk to the students and support them, and, and you, you, know, you, you give guest lectures at classrooms and so forth, it has a tremendous impact because you're modeling your behavior, you're sharing your life experiences and your successes, and even your failures. And, and it's so important for all of us to model those kinds of experiences for our students. It really benefits them. So thank you so much for your involvement and enjoy the rest of the reunion. Thank you, President Sherman. Right now, I'm going to, to give you just a brief overview of the Ebony Bobcat Network and the history of EBN. The Ebony Bobcat Network was established in 2010 by black alum from the 60s to support the Urban Scholars Program. Through the creation of the EBN Urban Scholarship Endowment and also to create a network of alumni engagement. The Urban Scholars Program is a legacy initiative of Dr. Roderick McDavis, the 20th president of Ohio University and the first African American. The program provides academic and financial resources to minority students from urban areas to ensure their success while attending Ohio University. It is the mission of EBN to encourage and support full participation in Ohio University alumni activities, to generate financial support for the Ohio University EBN Urban Scholarship Endowment and to involve alumni in the EBN programmatic activities, to support the university's diversity and inclusion initiatives with the goal of increasing recruitment, enrollment, retention, and graduation of African American students, to honor the heritage and contributions of preceding and present generations of persons of color who attended or are attending Ohio University. 
EBN celebrates alumni achievement, student engagement, and its commitment to Ohio University through various events sponsored by EBN affiliates in Akron Canton, Chicago, Cincinnati Dayton, Cleveland, Columbus, and Washington, DC. Collectively, the Ebony Bobcat Network has been recognized for the following awards by the Ohio University Alumni Association. Outstanding Philanthropy, Outstanding Alumni Society, Most Innovative Program Award, Alden Community Service Award, Alumni Networking Award, Alumni Student Networking Award. The Ebony Bobcat Network has amassed over $700,000 to support the minority students of Ohio University. These contributions rest in the following endowments. The Ebony Bobcat Network Urban Scholarship Endowment was created to provide financial assistance for four years to the student recipients. It became fully endowed in 2019 and the first scholarship recipient was awarded in 2020. The second is the Ebony Bobcat Network, Dr. Michelle Curtis Pennick, 1966 Endowed Scholarship. This gift is through the generosity of Dr. Michelle Curtis Pennick. It is a four-year renewable scholarship for minority students accepted into the Patton College of Education, majoring in early childhood education. The Ebony Bobcat Network remains true to its mission and devoted to Ohio University. At this time, I would like to share with you the founders of EBN. And if any of them are present, when I call your name, would you please stand? Dr. Patricia Ackerman, John Addison, <laughs> Huey Ball, Johnny Ben, Charles Brimmer, Constance Lawson Davis, Ralph Hopper, Jean Hairston Allen Jenkins, Gary Nickerson, Anne Marie. Anne Marie Huckabee Ogletree, Everett Lewis Overstreet, R. Glenn Stringer, Shirley Yarborough Stringer, Elizabeth Weed Award, Thomas Washington, Lawana McKinley White, and Thelma Williams, deceased. We owe a debt of gratitude to them, a debt of gratitude. At this time, thank you so much. At this time, I would also like to introduce the National Board of the Ebony Bobcat Network. If you are here, I would appreciate it if you would stand as well. First and foremost is the Vice President, Damon Scott. Our Recording and Corresponding Secretary is Elisa Green. I'm giving Elisa a pass. She is young, and I know that she was out last night. <laughs> She is uh, uh, the number two on my daughter's uh, sorority line at Delta Sigma Theta. And I know all of them were together and they are a phenomenal group. So like I said, I have to give her a pass. Uh, in addition to that, I would like to recognize the uh, chairpersons, if they are here, of the EBN National Board. and. Um, to, to get started, um, the awards committee. Uh, that would be Brandon Smith. The
the Communications Committee is Fern Ziegler. The Endowment Committee is Stella Antwine. Stella's in the back. The African American Heritage Committee, and that's Clarence Harris. The Membership Committee, Robert Norton. I'm trying to think, am I missing anyone? I think that's everyone. Did I miss one? Oh, how could I forget that? The Student Parent Committee Chair is Takia Howard. I don't know if Takia is here, but if there is any representation from the Student Parent Committee, if you would stand, it would be greatly appreciated. And again, we thank you. At this time, Damon is going to share affiliate highlights with you. Let's see. I think did I take yours? We're good. All right, so before I greet you, I'm going to remind you that there are just two of us here on the stage. Uh, in addition to, of course, President Sherman. And there are probably about 100 to 150 people in the audience. So we've all done this before. So I want to make sure that everyone knows. And, and I, want, I want you all to let us up here know that there's 150 people here. When I say, good morning. Good morning. Very good. All right. OK. Now, you all, all right. As our Madam President, Valerie Biggs Hill said, my name is Damon Scott, and I am the Vice President of the Board, the National Board for the Ebony Bobcat Network, and I want to welcome you all here. Okay, so you all have been sitting down for a few minutes. We want to make sure, because it's early in the morning, that we keep everybody's blood flowing. So I want everybody to stand up. Everybody just stand up and just say hello to the folks next to you. If you haven't greeted somebody at the table, just say hello. folks now you can start winding down your hellos and go back to your seats please all right we're gonna start winding it down and getting back to your seats finish up those hellos and please get back to your seats <laughs>
Okay, folks, if you all could take, take your seats again. I know I opened up a can of worms when I told y'all to get up and start talking to each other. But actually, if, if, if everyone can take their seats. Thank you, thank you, all right. Now, I'm, so everybody's awake now, right? Okay, folks have been talking about, uh, of course, we were all out last night, <laughs> or probably a lot of us were out last night late, because this is Ohio University in Athens. Uh, but I'm so glad to see everybody got up this morning to make it here to the breakfast. Um, so before I start and introduce our affiliates, um, we have a quick housekeeping matter. All right, so um, where is, if you see the, I, I think some of you all probably know this gentleman in the back in that nice purple and gold sweatshirt, Mr. Ty Carr. Let's give Ty Carr a round of applause. Okay, so Ty never stops working, even though he did a, an excellent job with the, uh, with the gala last night. He's up this morning working, and we put him to work doing one more thing. He is walking around with these little cards in his hand, and he's passing them out to all the tables. On this card, you will see, and when you receive the card, it says President's Town Hall. President Sherman is hosting a town hall meeting directly after our breakfast, and it's going to be right here across, um, across the rotunda and outside in, um, in one of the large lecture halls. Of course, you'll see everyone going that way. And President Sherman is taking the uh, time to, in his busy schedule, to host this town hall, and we want you as alums, students, uh, faculty administrators to pose questions to President Sherman. So when you receive this card, you will see it says President's Town Hall and submit your question. Ty is walking around distributing these cards, and we want you to please write out your very thoughtful questions about our alma mater. Uh, whatever question you have for President Sherman about the university, the state of the university, um, about uh, the current administration, about the next administration that's coming up, we want you to please fill out these cards so that we can have a very robust um, exchange during the President's Town Hall. Okay, everybody got it? Everybody clear? Okay, very good. Thank you so much. All right, so as Madam President mentioned, um, we have our uh, Nat Ebony Bobcat Network was chartered in 2010, and it was really just chartered with one chapter. Um, the, the chartering chapter was in Cleveland. Uh, but of course, we expanded um, as time went on, and we want to continue to expand, because I'm sure probably everyone here in the room uh, maybe is a member or somehow affiliated with a national organization. And all of us know the work of a national organization gets done at the local level. That's where all of the people who, who, um, who are members of the organization do all the hard work day in and day out, week in and week out, and month in and month out to really move the organizational forward. And the Ebony Bobcat Network is no exception. We are um, a great organization because of the affiliates that we have. We currently have six affiliates, and we want to introduce you to the affiliates and their leadership now. Our first affiliate is Akron Canton, and Tracy Carter is our president. Where is Tracy? Please stand, Tracy. Okay, how many folks in here are from the Akron Canton area? All right, okay, we got a shout out to Akron Canton. Okay, so all of you people making noise for Akron Canton, I know you are active in the Akron Canton affiliate, right? If you are not, stand up one more time, Tracy. Please see Tracy Carter. You got, I, I hear a whole lot of new members in the house. Thank you very And Akron Canton is our newest affiliate. They were just chartered right in 2019, 20, right at the beginning of, right before the pandemic. We had a great kickoff event. Um, at Kent State University um, in February of 2020. And the next month, of course, we all know the pandemic really hit home in Ohio. Um, so Akron Canton has done a lot of great work um, being our newest affiliate. And all of you Akron Canton folks should be going to see Tracy to get information on when and where their affiliate meets. Thank you so much, Tracy. All right, our next affiliate is Chicago. Where is Clarence Harris? Mr. Harris, please stand up. All right, thank you, Clarence. All 
Okay, so we know that obviously uh, Chicago is outside of Ohio, but are there any Chicago folks here? Anybody from Chicago? Okay, all right, all right, there we go right there. All right, very good. Okay, so Chicago is well represented at this table. <laughs> and we, I bet probably everyone in the room knows someone in the Chicago land area from Ohio University. Contact that person and tell them they need to be contacting Clarence Harris to become um, more active with the Chicago affiliate. Thank you so much, Clarence. Next up is Cincinnati, Dayton. Where the where is okay? So I'm sorry. Renell Frazier is our um, our affiliate president in uh, Cincinnati, Dayton. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be with us this weekend because she had a prior commitment. But who's here from Cincinnati? Who's here from the Cincinnati ad ad affiliate? Ashley Ferguson. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, where where are my folks from Cincinnati? Where are y'all? I know y'all in here somewhere. Y'all, you heard all that noise that Akron Canton made, and y'all aren't gonna say Cincinnati's not gonna represent themselves. Come, nobody from Cincinnati, stand up and say something. Come on, make some noise. Okay, all right. If you if you are an alum in the Cincinnati Dayton area and you are not uh, um, active with EBN you need to contact Renell Frazier and make sure that you are become active with our Cincinnati Dayton uh, affiliate. Thank you so much, Cincinnati Dayton. Okay, I know my next affiliate is definitely going to represent when I say Cleveland. Where is Cleveland in the house? All right. All right. And where is Lynn Charles, our affiliate president? There she is, waving her hand. Thank you, Lynn Charles. Okay, now, all right, all y'all folks from Cleveland, and I'm from Cleveland, that's my hometown. I love it dearly, but I'm gonna have to call y'all out a little bit. Now, I heard a whole lot of noise when I said Cleveland, but we don't hear all that noise on our monthly meetings and our monthly calls. Okay, so all you folks from Cleveland who made all that noise, y'all make sure to contact us, contact Lynn, Lynn Charles, stand up one more time, our new uh, affiliate president. We need you in the house. Okay, uh, okay, all my, my, my homeboys and homegirls in Cleveland, y'all want to represent, okay, y'all want to make all that noise. We need to hear you making noise on our monthly calls, okay, in our monthly Zoom meetings. All right, thank you, Cleveland. Our next affiliate, we got the Tri-C area, right? We got, we started out with Cincinnati. We went up in the southwest corner. We went all the way up to northeast to go to Cleveland, and now we got to come back to central Ohio and Columbus. Traylene, where's Traylene Harris? Please stand up. Here's our president, Traylene Harris. Traylene Hines. Okay, and where are all my people from Columbus? Where are y'all? Come on, Columbus. Okay, all right. All right, very good, very good. Okay, Columbus, it, all you folks who stood up, I know some of you either are or have been active with EBN. If you are not and you're from the Columbus or the central Ohio area, you need to be looking for Traylene Hines. You can come up to, to Traylene. Stand up one more time, Traylene. Make sure folks know who you are, okay? All right, we want to get you active in the central Ohio area. Okay, and our sixth and last affiliate is Washington, D.C. Where is George Wilson? Come on, George. Here's George. Okay, and where are our capital region folks? Who, who's here from, from Washington, D.C.? Come on, all right. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much. That's our other affiliate outside the state of Ohio. Uh, very active. Thank you to, uh, to George and also to Lisa Early, who was our former president there. I know I see, there's Lisa. Okay, hey Lisa. All right. All of our folks in the capital region, in DC, in the DMV, Washington, DC, uh, Maryland and Virginia, you all need to contact George or you can see anybody in EBN to get information on uh, when and where the DC affiliate meets. Okay, so now those are our six affiliates. Who got next? Who got next? I know there's some folks. Okay, I see somebody who's got her hand raised. Where are you from, sister? My name is Monique. That's Monique. Stand up, Monique.
Thank, thank you, Monique. Okay, I know, oh, I know you. I know you not. I, I was just getting ready to say we had a conversation last night about Atlanta. Absolutely. EBN connects. <laughs> Monique and I had a conversation last night where and I heard a lot of I heard a lot of noise when she said Atlanta. Who's from Atlanta? Who's who's in Atlanta now? We got folks from okay, we got some we got some folks here. All right. I know prior to EBN being chartered in 2010, um, the former Black Alumni Association of Ohio University used to be very active in Atlanta back in the 90s and the early 2000s. So we know we have a lot of alums in Atlanta. We want, we want to, as Monique said, she start, they're starting to get together and we want to welcome uh, a, an official Atlanta affiliate into, um, into EBN. So all you Atlanta folks, and I know everybody in the room knows somebody in Atlanta from Ohio University, call them, tell them to start thinking about how they're going to get active and contribute to EBN in Atlanta. So thank you so much, Monique. All right, and then I also lastly want to mention Philadelphia. Do we have, I know, where's Anthony Webb? Where's Anthony Webb? Okay, all right, I see Mr. Calvert. There's Anthony Webb. So everybody see Anthony Webb? So once again, in early 2000, 2020, um, folks from EBN Cleveland were planning this great road trip. We were going to go to Philadelphia um, to help Philadelphia get its EBN affiliate off the ground. We had this great trip planned. We were going to fellowship uh, with, uh, at a church that's pastored by an alum, um, Alan Waller. And again, that was, in, that was gonna be in March of 2020, and what happened, of course, COVID hit. So we had to postpone our trip, but Webb, we're coming back to Philadelphia, and we're gonna get our Philadelphia affiliate started too. Okay, very good. Okay, so lastly, I will say, um, we, we've mentioned our six affiliates and a couple other locations where we are trying to get our, um, get our, um, our affiliates up and running. If you live in a community that we didn't mention and you want to establish an affiliate, you know some other folks from, um, from Ohio University in your community, or even if you don't, but you want to help uh, the Ebony Bobcat Network expand its reach and expand its network, then please come see. You can see anybody. You can see Valerie. You can see myself. You can see any of our, um, our affiliate uh, presidents, any of our committee chairs, anyone aff affiliated with EBN. Uh, we actually have, we have buttons, and some of us even have a little uh, QR code on our phones. That's right, everybody hold up your phone if you've got a QR code on it. We can help you get an affiliate started. So again, who got next? Thank you.
Thank you so much, Luana. That's a great reminder. Absolutely. We can we all are uh, have become accustomed to meeting virtually. Uh, so that, as to Luana's point, no matter where you are, you can connect with one of our existing affiliates or some of these a couple of new affiliates that will be coming up. So thank you so much. And that comes from our um, our our first our chartered uh, national board president, Luana McKinley White. Thank you, Luana. Okay, now we are ready to move to the next portion of our breakfast, and I think it's probably the most exciting portion uh, because it's now time for our awards presentation. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, the, the work of a national organization is done at the local level, and we have a lot of alums, a lot of alumni across, this, across the country, across the world, who are doing great things in their local communities. Uh, they're doing great things here with the university, with our alma mater, and we want to recognize them. So at this time, we are going to um, make some uh, award presentations. We have six awards that we are um, presenting today, and we've got some pretty impressive um, awardees. Um, and, and I actually want to say we also have some pretty impressive uh, nominators of these awards. Uh, so we, we, have an, 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 we have a very robust uh, awards program and um, awards process um, that, um, that folks you know, sat down and thought it took a lot of time to think about in terms of creating the awards, what they consist of, and then our awards committee uh, led by Brandon Smith and the Washington DC affiliate did an excellent job, he and his committee, um, on pulling this together and making sure that we are doing the work to recognize our very distinguished alumni across the world. So we are now going to uh, start with, um, with our first award. And our first award is the Distinguished Service Award. It's going to be presented by Mary Bradley. Mary, please come forward. Um, to our distinguished guests, alumni, and friends, my name is Mary Bradley. I'm from the college, the college, the class of 1980, College of Communications. It is an honor and a privilege for me to stand before you today to present the Ebony Bobcat Network Distinguished Alumni Award. The recipient of this award is a classmate of mine. We graduated together. Dear friend and colleague, all of the excitement has been taken out of who the recipient is because his name is up there. <laughs> so as I read this, I'm gonna say he, but you'll know who I'm talking about. While I'm proud of his achievements, I am not completely surprised by the trajectory of his journey. On campus, he was a charismatic, out-of-state student from Philadelphia who always reflected his East Coast flair and hometown pride, particularly in regard to its cultural influences. He seemed destined to pursue a career in the arts and entertainment industry, and most likely to utilize that platform to address concerns and issues relevant to the black community. I followed my friend's career and celebrated his many successes along the way. He first managed his family-owned theater and nightclub. Then he managed, an entertainment, uh, he managed entertainment at an Atlantic City casino. After graduating from law school, he moved to Hollywood, where he created a, he worked as a creative executive at Fox during the era of celebrated urban programming. He transitioned to HBO, and he continued to forge new ground in entertainment and representation. Eventually, he launched his own production company, Race Ipsa Media Incorporated, where he has produced film, television, audio, and digital projects, all of which have told our stories with integrity and substance. A particular note is his amazing of uh, production, The Bible Experience, which many of you were introduced to at uh, an OU reunion. It's a 98 hour long audio Bible featuring an all black cast of more than 400 notable personalities, including Denzel Washington, Angela Bassett, Samuel L. Jackson, just to name a few. He most recently was appointed 
Senior Vice President of the NAACP Hollywood Bureau. In that role, he engages with all entertainment industry institutions on behalf of the black artistic community to ensure fair and equitable access to opportunity. In addition to his professional pursuits, he has represented the black alumni of Ohio University with pride and distinction. He serves on the Scripps College of Communications Dean's Advisory Board. He was co-founder of the college's Semester in Los Angeles program, convening 25 students each semester for classes and internships within the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. He has been a guest speaker for multiple university events and contributed to various fundraising campaigns. Distinguished guests, alumni, and friends, I present to some and introduce to others the Ebony Bobcat Network Distinguished Alumni Recipient, Mr. Kyle D. Bowser. Congratulations, Kyle. <clears throat> well, this way. Uh, yeah, I'll take a picture. Do I take a picture somewhere? Okay. You old. Glasses gotta go. You want some? Oh, break them. Step forward. Thank you very much. It is, uh, whoa, it is really an honor to, to be here this morning and to accept this award and to receive this award from such a dear friend. Uh, Mary, thank you so much. I mean, so much coming from you. Um, wow. Uh, where do I start? I, I don't know. I only have a, a couple of minutes, so let me be quick. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Um, no, let me back up. For the last four or five years, I've been writing a memoir. I'm only on chapter four, I got a long way to go. But I've also been debating about what the title of my book would be. Um, one idea I have in mind is, uh, the revolution will not be televised because the network passed on my pitch. That's, <laughs> that's, that's one. But the other title I have in mind is proximity to greatness. And because as I look back over my life, as I look back over my career, um, I've always had a close proximity to greatness. It started with my family. I, have a, I had a grandfather, a father, and an uncle who were very, very prominent in Philadelphia. Um, we were more influential than affluential, but very prominent. Um, and so I grew up with access. Um, the downside of that was I never really appreciated what my own self-worth was. And that had a lot to do with why I came to school here. I wanted to get away from Philly, where everyone knew my last name, where doors were swinging open. I wanted to see who I could be on my own two feet. Um, and so I started to, to make my way. Eventually, as Mary mentioned, I moved to Los Angeles. And not long after moving there, I fell in love and got married. Passed my last name on to someone else, who went on to be quite a, a force in the industry herself. My wife created the show Living Single and Half and Half and uh, uh, For Your Love. And, um, and she can, thank you, thank you. She continues to do well. She's been an executive producer on Blackish and um, uh, 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 Dear White People and uh, some other shows. She got a new show coming out with Kerry Washington and Delroy Lindo this fall on Hulu, so take a look for that. So anyway, but, but the point is, she now carries my last name. And so people would often say, oh, are you related to Yvette? <laughs> right. Um, then I had a son, my oldest son, who attended school here, graduated in 2019. Thank you. Um, and as Mary mentioned, I, um, I'm involved with the Semester in LA program. And so every semester, 25 students come from OU to LA, and I teach a class with them. Um, and there were a number of years where they would always say, oh, are you related to Evan? Because they knew my son from campus. <laughs> my youngest son is now beginning his junior year at Stanford. Um, and he's quite the baseball player. In fact, 
some pro teams were trying to recruit him out of high school, and if things go well this year, will perhaps be his last year on campus, and he will, he will declare himself eligible for the draft in July. Already, people are saying, are you related to Drew? <laughs> um, and I have, you know, in my career, always had a very close proximity to some very talented and very famous people who, who are great at what they do. And so I have this proximity to greatness. But coming here to this campus, particularly every three years for this bar, people know me. And they, they regard me as someone um, who has done some special things. Mary, she didn't call me Kyle, she calls me KB. Uh, but people say, hey KB, I'm really proud of what you're doing, man. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. And so I just wanted to say thank you for recognizing me for me, not being someone affiliated with someone else. Um, and this will go in my home with a great deal of pride. Thank you so much. Oh, one last thing. Um, thank you. Um, the, the pastor said you can't take, you got to give, so I just want to do that. Thank you. And, I, and I, Lastly, I'm sorry to keep taking up time. I must mention the angel in the room, Luana. Thank you for every word you've ever said to me. Thank you. Congratulations again to Brother Bowser, and thank you again to Mary Bradley for the nomination. Our next award is the Inspirational Athlete, and I'm going to ask Ms. Kenyatta Borden to come to the podium. Kenyatta. And Kenyatta is our newly elected uh, recording secretary for the Cleveland Affiliate. And Kenyatta, so I want to make sure you all understand this. Kenyatta, as I said, is, is an officer in our Cleveland Affiliate, and Kenyatta lives in Detroit. So that's dedication for you. Good morning. Okay, I don't do this often, so. <laughs> ah. Where am I reading from? I'm sorry. I'm just reading out. All right, um, so, huh? Oh. <laughs> um, this is a, oppor a great opportunity. Um, the young lady that I, I do get to uh, recognize and was a senior on the basketball team when I joined the basketball team here at OU. And not only did she leave marks on me then, physical and mental, <laughs> um, she has continued to be a presence in my life and I do appreciate it and I, thank you. Um, so I will go further with uh, Nicole A. Smith exemplifies all aspects of the award she is being honored for the EBN Inspirational Athlete Award. She was a student athlete earning a Bachelor of Business Administration degrees, Administration degree with dual majors in Management Information Systems and Marketing while also playing on the women's basketball team. Additionally, Nicole holds a Master of Science degree in Science Information Systems from Missouri State University. As an athlete at Ohio University, Nicole holds more than a few records. Her name and numbers are all over Ohio University women's basketball history books. Nikki, as we call her, <laughs> as she is fondly referred to, is a member of the 1,000 point club with a total of 1,225 points scored over her college career, which spans from 1988 to 1992. During her 1990-91 season and 91-92 seasons, she was both scoring and rebound leader, scoring 410 points one season, 569 points another season. <laughs> Pulling down 266 rebounds in one season and 273 
in the next. Individual records include a 38-point game, 18 field goals she made against Kent State, 19 rebounds against Central Michigan. Yes, good job. <laughs> Her career records also include 891 rebounds and 50 blocks. Beast under the boards, yes. <laughs> All righty. Nicole's leadership on the court makes her off-court successes no surprise. In addition to her 25 years in corporate America as a management consultant, she is the owner of Faith Books and More Publishing, where she has authored eight books, four of which are children's books. Um, she, is sought after, she is a sought-after speaker and has led several workshops covering areas from book publishing, software testing methods, and project management. Last but not least, Nicole founded the Cleveland Metropolitan School District Sports League. In collaboration with CMSD Alumni Association to give student athletes in the district a chance to dream, hope, and believe that better life is attainable. Most recently, Nicole A. Smith's journey has brought her full circle as assistant professor of instruction inside Ohio University's College of Business. She continues to live by her belief that legends are made while making a pathway for others to do the same. I present Nicole A. Smith. Good morning, thank you all. So one of the things about it is um, some things that the nominating committee would know I wanna um, share with you all, but first I wanna thank you. This is a great honor to be here today. Um, you have given me something to live up to, to be called inspirational. Um, but I wanna tell the story behind the story. So thank you to the Ebony Bobcat Network for this great honor and the nominating committee. So one of the things about me is um, I went from poverty to representation and now to inspiration. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for my flowers today. And I'll tell you why. I grew up in poverty. Neither one of my parents graduated from high school. So you would wonder, well, how did you um, get your work done? No one asked me, did you get your homework done? I just, for whatever reason, just did it. Um, I was cut from the basketball team, the volleyball team, and the track team in junior high school. I didn't start playing basketball till the 10th grade. The reason why is because I was hospitalized. I had my first surgery in the ninth grade. And then from there, I went on to have about 12 more surgeries for different reasons. Um, when I entered high school, I wanted to be a secretary. I wanted to rent an apartment from a dilapidated apartment complex and buy a used car. Not knowing that dilapidated apartment complex was actually a senior citizen's home. So I never could have moved in there in the first place. I didn't know I was that lost. But I had one thing that I know for sure, aside from God Almighty, was a coach. And he believed in his program. And at that time, I was probably coming out of the, the hospital, I was probably about 115 pounds. So I was a bone. He saw me, the track coach saw me, and he gave me a shot. And he said, if you run for me for three years, 
I will get you a college scholarship. Now remember, I said a track coach. <laughs> Kenyatta said, I played basketball. I was that lost. I believed a track coach can get me a basketball scholarship. I was that lost. But what I did know was that he said he would do it, and I said, I'll run for him. So when it was time for him to deliver on his promise, he contacted the Ohio State University. They were already full, so there was no room. So he contacted Ohio University, and Ohio, he convinced Ohio University to come see me run track. This is a true story. They came to see me run track, and you know about coaches. You better get out there and blankety blank, 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 and blank. So I ran like I'd never ran before. They came back to see me run, um, play basketball because of the way I ended up running track. So I had one shot, one opportunity, and that was here at Ohio University. And it was because of a sport, and it was because of a coach that I am here today. Oh. So that was coming out of poverty. And I do want to thank um, the person who actually hired me at Ohio University was, it used to be Dean Sherman and now President Sherman. So thank you. So when we talk about representation, you did, thank you, Kenyatta, for sharing with um, others about, a little about me. But there's more to that story when it comes to representation. Because since getting the congratulations email, so thank you, Ms. Valerie, for that, and Mr. Damon. Since then, some stuff that was not even in the nomination form because it was uh, brand new to me. I have since launched um, Elevate, a workforce development and training program, where I train people to bring them out of poverty. I have V6 where I'm taking students, where I plan to take students down to the Virgin Islands for a six weeks program, an intense program. In addition to that, I've been selected as a global ambassador for Vital Voices, so I'll go to DC next week, so I have a global impact now. Yeah. And the list continues. The most recent thing that I decided to do was, hey, there's a problem with the housing crisis, right? So where are these people who I'm bringing out of poverty going to live? So I decided to, um, to build housing, sustainable, affordable, green housing for people who are coming out of poverty to give them an opportunity to submit it live. And I'm probably forgetting some stuff um, but we'll stop there. So when I think about from poverty, from, from poverty to representation to inspiration, just think about that. So now I do ask that if you ever see me not living up to this award and not being an inspiration to others, please let me know. Hold me accountable for that because I want you to. Because I want to go from an inspiration, representation, and definitely to bring people out of poverty. In closing, I want to say one comment about representation. And I shared this at the College of Business um, event yesterday. When we bring people here from, Ohio, um, from Brazil, well, Brazil is predominantly black because of the African diaspora, correct? Two young ladies came up to me at the closing banquet, and they wanted to take a picture with me. Sure, let's take a picture. But I wanted to know why they wanted to take a picture. And this is what she wrote to me. Juliana and I talked about the importance of having you there teaching us, a black woman professor at one of the most traditional universities in the USA. Having you in this role of power is seeing myself represented there and knowing that it's possible to occupy that space as well. So thank you.
congratulations again to Sister Nicole, and thank you so much to Sister Kenyatta for the nomination. I told you all we had some really impressive alums, right? But we already knew that. All right, our next award, we're gonna continue with our Inspirational Athlete Award, and the next award is going to be presented by Miss Anita Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you can come to the stage. Good morning. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, EBN, uh, for your genuineness, your love, and your energy. You know, there was this guy that was a great basketball player back in the day. He has been inducted into five halls of fame for playing and coaching basketball, including the Ohio University Athletic Hall of Fame, and also the State of Ohio Hall of Fame. He also played for the Detroit Pistons for a while. And after, that was after his four years of serving here. I know when I first saw this guy, it was so amazing. My, my father was a basketball player and coach, so I was around basketball a lot. But I saw this young man here at Ohio University. And you know, he used to do this uh, move where he would like come down the floor dribbling and then he would take off from the foul line and fly through the air and he'd have that ball in his right hand and then in his left hand and then back in his right hand and <laughs> wow right into the basket and it was so exciting, you know, to see him do it. Every time the, he would do that, the crowd would just yell and stomp. It was so exciting. And they, sometimes I think they came to the ball game just to wait for him to make that move because it was so exciting to see that. He earned the name Snake because of that move. And I'm talking about my husband, the one and only Jerry D. Jackson. Now, he held the title of the most valuable player during all three years on the varsity team. He led the team to the Elite Eight in 1964. And that team record has not been broken yet. <laughs> Tied, but not broken. This 1964 team has been noted as the best team out of 100 years of OU basketball history. <laughs> Mr. Jackson served in the US Army and fought in the Vietnam War. He went on to serve as a junior high school teacher for 36 years, teaching industrial technology and mechanical drawing. He is a very likable guy, and students, and students always were drawn to his classes to have a chat with him, and he always made himself available to talk to students. 
He also coached basketball at Ohio University Zanesville branch for 12 years and had over 200 wins. He has, he has exhibited an understanding of and commitment to cultural diversity and intergenerational inclusion through his involvement as a board member of the Nelson T. Gantt Foundation, located in Zanesville, Ohio, the Renville Historic Preservation Society in Renville, Ohio, where he served as president, the Muskingum County Court System mentoring troubled youths, and various other youth groups where he has inspired numerous young folks throughout the years. His love, he is definitely a family man. He loves being with his two daughters and his four grandchildren. And one of his granddaughters plays basketball now at Rochester Institute University <laughs> of, of technology. And so, He's already up here, my <laughs> dear, sweet, he can't leave me, <laughs> husband. Well, that was a surprise. Uh, she got me. Uh, it's great to be back in Bobcat country. It's always been great. It has always been great. It seems like I've been connected with the university for the past 60 years in one way or another. Uh, I met Anita here in 1962, I believe it was, and we've been together for 57 years. <laughs> we have two lovely daughters, Kim and Christy. We tried to talk them into coming to o OU, but they, I tell you, we tried and tried. We kept bringing them down here. <laughs> but the only thing they loved about OU was at a football game when the band played afterwards. <laughs> and, and that's as far as it went. But uh, no, they both uh, attend one attended college at Cincinnati then went on and got her Juris uh, uh, doctorate at uh, Syracuse University. The other one went to uh, Kent State, a rivalry, and she got her uh, master's there also, and they're both doing very well. Grandkids, we have four. We just moved to uh, North Carolina to be with the grandkids, and four, three of the four, Moved out to cut, took off for college. So now we, now we, we only have one left, and she just went into the sixth grade. We had a grand, uh, our grandson that we have just graduated from <clears throat> um, Air Force Academy, and was assigned to uh, Wright Patterson in Dayton, Ohio. But. Uh, you know, it, it's, been, it's always wonderful to come back to Ohio University and see familiar faces, Connie, Luana, yeah, where's Pat, and Joe. I see you out there, brother. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming. But anyway, whenever we come back, we always enjoy the company, the people, and we always make new friends. I, uh, you know, 
I have a lot more that I could tell you, but they have me on two minutes. <laughs> really, three? Oh, three minutes. You know, I, um, when I came to Ohio University, I think I stayed, you know, for four years. I never, I would go back home to visit, but I came right back to Ohio University. And I lived uh, only 30 miles from here in a small town called Renville. If you uh, Google Renville.com, you would find that it's a small coal mining town, population 34. Wow. Now, there were more than 34 people there when I left, but uh, the coal mining played out and uh, they started to leave, so it has a very diverse community. It was a very diverse community, black, white. The owners of the coal mine went south, recruited black coal miners. He brought in some white coal miners and he paid them all the same. The, um, when you, if you Google it, there's a lot of firsts in Renville. The first African-American doctor practiced in Renville. He was the first African-American doctor to graduate from what is now Ohio State's Medical Center. We have the first African-American mayor woman to uh, be voted on a Roberta Preston. Sophia Mitchell was nominated to be the postmistress, first African-American postmistress in the United States, is from Renville. I've worked, I've been, my wife and I have been working with a professor here in the uh, history department. We're trying to get another plaque. There's two historical plaques there now, and we're work, working on to get the uh, Isaiah Tuppence, who was the first African-American mayor this side of the Mississippi. But there, there are a lot of firsts there, and uh, if you get a chance, please, renville.org, and you can go from there. One more thing. Uh, I think about three years ago, we did a tour out of, from Zanesville. <laughs> we did a tour, it's called A to Z, Athens to Zanesville, okay? And we had a bus and we took a tour of all the small villages in southeastern Ohio related to coal, uh, cities of Black Diamond. And it was amazing. I went along and, and get, did some of the commentary, but at the uh, outing up here at Memorial Auditorium on Thursday, I ran into about four or five of the uh, students that went along with us, and they remembered it, and they said it was outstanding. But look it up, renville.org. And uh, one more time, I want to thank NBN Bar for this uh, precious award, and I will definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Our alumni just keep getting more and more impressive. And so far, our award recipients have been um, 
I guess I could say maybe from a, a certain era or before a certain time here at Ohio University. Um, but we know that not only are our, uh, some of our more seasoned alumni um, have been very impressive and inspirational in the work that they do in their communities, we also have some, some young um, alumni, more recent alumni, who are good as um, everybody in the room. Jerry Jackson, you were in the 60s. You look amazing, let me just say that. I'm already losing a little bit of the battle, but um, we're gonna try to get it together. So that's, that's amazing. Um, I am thrilled to be um, receiving this award. I think that um, at Ohio University, I received two educations, I wanna say, and I spent the first part of my career acting on the education that I got in the classroom. And so um, I have both of my degrees in health service administration and worked in community health for um, many years and then long-term care. Um, and so that's where I built my career from the educational um, education that I got here. Um, but from the other education outside of the classroom, what's so interesting is I learned to be um, in community with other black people at a PWI. <laughs> so um, here at this pre predominantly white institution, the camaraderie amongst the black students here taught me a lot about community and community development. And that's what I've been spending the latter part of my career building. So one of the parts of our story is to, is to really increase the circulation of the black dollar. So what we, what we host in the store is other black entrepreneurs that have original products. So we have body butters and soaps and all, all kind of things that are created by other black individuals. We're giving them op opportunity to, for those individuals to, to donate black, to give black, to support black, and to circulate that dollar again and again. So we do, we do events there. We host fundraisers where people can donate clothing, and then we give that uh, portions of those proceeds back to the um, places that, that, that host the fundraisers. And so it's an amazing thing to be in this community building thing. And I learned that here at Ohio University. I was a student pastor for three years of the time that I was here. Um, and we were able to accomplish some amazing things in a very small community. So it doesn't take a lot to have a huge impact. Um, and I, I learned that here at Ohio University. So I so will not bore you with, with, with anything else, <laughs> but I appreciate um, the award, and I appreciate uh, being recognized here at my alma mater that I love, 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 love. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did not tell y'all our folks are, are impressive. Give this, for this brother to be so young, he is the future of, Ebony, of the Ebony Bobcat Network. And I know you said you, you are in Chicago and you're sitting next to Clarence, so I know you're gonna help him with some folks in Chicago. Very good. Wow, this just keeps getting better and better. All right, um, we've heard from some very inspirational athletes. We've heard uh, about some very inspirational athletes. We've heard about some of our young alumni. Uh, and now we're going to transition into our legends. So we have two more awards uh, to be presented this morning as we are rounding third base. And next we're going to present our first legend award. And I'm gonna ask that Eden DeRosier please come to the stage. So I just want to say, I'm from Indianapolis. We don't have an EBN chapter in Indianapolis. I think the closest one is Cincinnati. Yes. So, yes. yes. <laughs> All righty. Yes. OK, so good morning. Good morning. All right. Yes, my name is Eden Evans DeRosier. And I'm a 1996 grad of the OU School of Theater's Professional Actor Training Program. I'm a, I'm a member in good standing of SAG-AFTRA. We do the, the SAG Awards every January. And Actors' Equity. Um, 
When I came here from Indianapolis in 1993, the only person I knew in the entire state lived in Cleveland. Um, but the School of Theater hosted a first year graduate student meet and greet, and that's where I met Dale Ricardo Shields. Dale is a two-time graduate. Let me get some. He's a two-time graduate of OU. He received a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in 1975 and a Master's of Fine Arts in 1995. Mr. Shields, my buddy Dale, is being honored as a, as a legend award for his many years of service as an educator, an historian, an activist in the arts, and an actor and director on Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, and regional theater. Some of Dale's personal professional acting credits include A Last Dance for Sybil by Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee, A Lincoln Portrait, Anyone Can Whistle, The Bill Cosby Show, Saturday Night Live, and Margaret's salute to Radio City Music Hall and Another World. When Dale returned to OU as a graduate student, he operated in three capacities. He was a graduate student, he was a production manager of the School of Theater in Cantner Hall, and with it, extensive main stage and lab sessions, and as a stage manager and stage management teacher. He excelled in all three of these capacities. During that time, he also directed at OU Three Ways Home in 1993, The Love Story of the Century in 1994, and my favorite, because I was in it, Rumors in 1994. <laughs> After earning his master's degree, Dale went on to teach at the College of Worcester and McAllister College. He continues to teach and enlighten the public with the history of black, Latinx, and indigenous American art forms. He presents this information for free on his website, iforcolor.org. With the objective of motivating critical thinking and encouraging cultural celebration of these marginalized communities. Dale has received a number of awards throughout his professional career, including the prestigious Kennedy Center Stephen Sandier Award for Excellence in Teaching in 2017, and the Actors Fund slash Encore Award in 2020. Also, he was a 2015 Tony Award nominee for excellence in theater education. I am honored, I was honored to nominate my buddy Dale for the Ebony Bobcat Network's 2022 Legend Award, and I'm equally honored to present it to him today. Congratulations, my friend. Did we do it? Oh, do I? Yeah, oh, great. Okay. Okay, sister. Okay. okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I want to thank the uh, EBN uh, 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 committee for this honor. Uh, I also would like to thank the um, Division of Fine Arts and the School of Theater um, for their generosity. 
I uh, first landed on Athens Rock in the 70s, and that, was, of course, was right after the Kent State incident. So there was National Guard all over campus, which was interesting, just trying to get across the campus in a very intense time. But uh, OU was just uh, a lot of fun. It really was, especially in, in, in the 70s. And I've been able to come back, I think, at least twice in each decade to do something on campus, mainly working with Ohio Valley Summer Theater, where I've had a chance to direct Ragtime and something else. Uh, a Man of La Mancha, just, just two, where I got a chance to really uh, uh, instill some diversity uh, within productions. Um, yesterday, I had the opportunity to speak to students in the uh, Department of Theater, and uh, the best I could say to them was that Ohio University truly prepared me for a, a career in professional theater. <clears throat> Uh, and of course, that's no easy task, you know, because what we do is, is very unpredictable. Uh, you never know. Um, oh, I wanted to uh, make sure that I, um, I introduce or acknowledge my um, first advisor and my acting professor, Professor Dennis Dalen. We're still in touch. Raise your hand, buddy. So it's always so good that every time I would come to town, he would come grab me and we'd go to lunch. And uh, we, we, we've come a long way since 1970, but we're still rolling, right? All right. I, he's still trying to get me to call him by his first name, and <laughs> I'm still in fear. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's, 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 it's really good to see him. Um, I share, in closing, um, I um, shared with the uh, students of theater yesterday, um, Andre De Shields, who recently won a Tony Award. Um, he shared his three cardinal rules of sustainability in the arts. So I will close by giving you those three. Um, Surround yourself with people whose eyes light up when, you see, when they see you. Uh, slowly is the fastest way to the top. The top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So keep on climbing. EBN, keep on climbing. Um, I'm sorry? Yes, Valerie. Uh, and to all of you, uh, the one thing I did notice, and maybe it's because I've been closed up doing research and, and, and COVID and all that, but it was so great to be greeted by so many smiles. Um, I forgot what that felt like. And uh, Ashe, which means to our ancestors. And again, thank you so much. Wow, what can we say other than wow? It just, just gets better and better. Okay, we are now um, down to our final award. And this one is a really special one. All of them are special in and of themselves. Uh, but this one is special, it's certainly special uh, to me personally, and I think it's special to a lot of uh, folks in EBN, uh, throughout EBN, but particularly EBN in Cleveland. Uh, because this award has been a long time coming, I guess we could say. Um, you know, I feel like this is probably the, what, the third time that I have referenced the last two and a half years that we have lived through this pandemic. And prior to the pandemic, we, uh, the Ebony Bobcat Network was going to um, present this award, this next award. Uh, but of course, uh, COVID stepped in the way, so it had to be delayed a little bit. Uh, and so there are several folks in EBN and specifically in our Cleveland affiliate 
who have been waiting for this moment for three years. So for our last legend award, I am going to ask the original, I guess we call her the founding president of the Ebony Bobcat Network, Ms. Lawana McKinley White to come to the stage, Lawana. Thank you all. This is definitely my pleasure. Um, let me just first say that when our committee several, many, many years ago uh, looked at creating a second award following the Trailblazer Award, we didn't know what we wanted, what it should be called, what should we be looking for, and we thought about a couple of people that we knew who there's no description for all the stuff that they did. They were just legendary. No one did the kinds of things that these folks did. The first recipient of the EBN Legend Award, who was that? Dr. Dr. Childs. Is there anyone other than her in the world? <laughs> the second image in our heads was the person that I am proud to present to you today. Finally, Hold, been holding on to this award for forever. <laughs> so let me begin. Connie Lawson Davis has never birthed a child in this world. And yet, she has countless numbers of babies all over the country. She has nurtured, guided, stood up for, encouraged, interceded for, and provided for OU students and alums of all ages. Facebook friends almost daily see her frequent posts celebrating accomplishments and special moments of one of her babies. They may be EI babies from Delta Sigma Theta. They may be EBN babies. They may be any babies, OU, her OU babies. They may be black, white, green, doesn't matter. Alums everywhere know and love Miss Connie as their cheerleader and ever supporter. Connie has always had a unique, sincere, warm, and non-judgmental way of relating to people of all ages, making her an excellent leader. She has served on OU, on the OU Alumni Board of Directors. She has served on the Ohio University Women's Club of Greater Cleveland's Executive Board for nine years. She is a founder and, first, and the first vice president of the Ebony Bobcat Network. She has served on two Epsilon IOTA chapter reunion planning teams, each bringing over 100 alumni sorors back to the campus. Connie has willingly and cheerfully traveled all across the state and around the country to represent alums in general and EBN in particular at important OU alumni events. She encourages others, always others, to engage as well so that we are in the room when it happens and our voices can be heard. Most of these trips are made at her own personal sacrifice and expense as reimbursement was not always available. But her desire to be there, to represent or guide or inspire has been her motivation and her reward. While performing many leadership roles in EBN and other entities, her attention to excellence and inclusion is always present. She has befriended university staff at all levels and in many areas of Ohio University. Because of her dedication to OU and her innate sense of decorum, Connie was asked to represent Ohio University at the investiture of not one, but two university presidents, that of Kent State University and of Ashland College, 
Now that's something, y'all. And I have never even heard of somebody, of a president asking an alum to go represent the university at such a prestigious event. Constance Patricia Lawson Davis, my childhood friend and neighbor, because we grew up across the street from each other, is a model for what university alumni engagement and leadership should be. In fact, she surpasses what most could or would do. And that makes her a legend to me. Connie, I present you. Okay, I think Damon wants to take it. Time is short, so, so is my speech going to be short. You know, the first thing I thought is, you know, after looking at all these other awardees, what am I doing here? <laughs> and the second thing was, I told them I didn't want it in the first place. Um, yeah, I noticed. They, they never pay me any attention. But they keep me around because I do have good ideas from time to time. Uh, wow. Uh, I, I, do, I really don't know what to say. I do what I do because I love you. Uh, Luana mentioned my EI babies. Would all my EI babies stand up? I mean, my, my babies, my Bobcat babies, my EI babies, young people that I've been associated with through the years, stand up. And if there are any undergrads here, stand up too. They are why I do what I do. Um, I think that in life, it's our duty to give back. If you're blessed, you're blessed to be a blessing. Um, and one of the things when I go from meeting to meeting and place to place, especially uh, if I'm representing EBN, is people always ask, well, how many members do you have? And I, as I thought about that, what that translates into is how many people care? How many people know what's going on at Ohio University? How many people care about what's going on at Ohio University? And I think it's our responsibility as black alums, as alums of any color, to care, to care about the young people here, to care about their future, because they are, they are our future, okay? Those of you who are not members of EBN, find somebody, scan this barcode, let them know that you care. Let them know that when we come on campus or when there's an issue that there are alums everywhere who care. We can't, we can't quantify it unless you come to us. So I'm shamelessly pitching <laughs> membership and participation in EBN today. And, you know, I, what else can I say? Just show up, be there. That, that's my constant thing, just be there. Don't, don't let anybody be surprised to see you anywhere where it says Ohio University, because you are Ohio University. Thank you so much. Okay, folks, we are um, getting ready to, to bring this to a close, but I do want to just take a moment of personal privilege 
um, for our last recipient, Connie Lawson Davis. She really is a legend, folks. Um, I can't, I mean, she is, she is EBN personified, but when I became active with EBN, it didn't take me long to realize that Connie Lawson Davis is not just active in the Ebony Bobcat Network. Uh, she is um, active in the Ohio Women's, uh, I'm sorry, in the Ohio University Women's Club in Cleveland and the different um, networks uh, and affiliates uh, just throughout Ohio University in, uh, in the Alumni Association, particularly, so many people know the name Connie Lawson Davis. Uh, so she's not just about EBN, she's about Ohio University. And then the last thing I just have to share is that anybody in Cleveland knows when they see Connie and talk about her dedication to EBN because her, um, her Ohio license plate says EBN1. <laughs> <laughs> So can can we just ha can we have all six of our um, our recipients just to please stand so we can recognize you one final time? All six of our recipients, please stand. I'm not gonna be able to go through. Uh, awesome. It seems as though they operate on a different time schedule, all of our award recipients. There have to be more than 24 hours in a day for them. The bar has been set so high. I was sitting there listening thinking, how do they get all of this done? They are phenomenal. They are deserving of another round of applause. I would like to close this out and just thank all of you for coming, thanking uh, the Vice President of the National Board of EBN for just doing a phenomenal job today. Uh, in addition to that, I very quickly would like to recognize that our student leaders are here. This is the next generation of EBN leadership. So for the student leaders that are here, would you all please stand? These young people are making it happen on this campus. And as Connie was saying, we have to embrace them, keep them encouraged, and of course, encourage one another. I also would like to recognize at this time very quickly, Tialis Jackson. She is our first EBN Urban Scholarship Award recipient. I would like for her to stand as well. As a reminder, the town hall meeting is going to be held in this building in room 135. Please complete questions. The postcards are on all of your tables. Uh, please do that. They will be presented so that a response can be given. Again, thank all of you for attending. This was absolutely awesome. Oh, before I go, let's not forget on your tables are tent cards, and on those tent cards is your opportunity to register for EBN. I know all of you have done it. I know no one is leaving here without that. In addition to that, there are QR codes for the endowment. Please scan that and please give. Don't forget your time. Come on now. Your what? And your what? That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Ebony Bobcats. Thank you, OU. Center pieces. Center pieces. Oh, let me not go any further. Uh, speaking about money, we have Tracy Carter, the president of the Akron Canton affiliate, and Tracy has an announcement that she's going to make as well. Let's welcome her, Tracy. Thanks, Madam President. 
As uh, Valerie opened our um, ceremony today, she mentioned that one of our priorities is, of course, membership and participation in EBN, but we're also committed to raising dollars for the Urban uh, Scholarship Fund. So on the tables are beautiful centerpieces that we encourage you to consider purchasing at a minimum of $25 um, and taking them to someone you love. Um, so that we can continue to generate revenue for the scholarship fund. So um, before you all uh, were seated today, I counted the centerpieces. We got 28 centerpieces on the tables. So that gives us an opportunity to raise at least 700 uh, this morning. So if you're interested in taking the centerpiece and blessing someone else um, uh, throughout this weekend, I encourage you to scan the QR code, make a donation of at least 25 or more, keywords or more, um, and uh, actually, Karen Bailey from our foundation office, she can see uh, instantly uh, your contributions coming in. So again, $25 uh, to benefit the scholarship fund by purchasing a centerpiece. Yes, you have a question. Okay. Thank you for that. All right, with that, we stand to be adjourned. Thank you all for your time. Sorry, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, I'm sorry, folks. One very last thing. Uh, on your table, at the in, in addition to the centerpiece, every table should have a bottle of bubbly. Uh, and you should also have a champagne flute. On Everyone should have a champagne flute. Please open the bottle of bubbly. Uh, pour some some of it into the champagne flutes, and let's have a toast to our award recipients. Thank you. On the count of three, we are going to toast.